Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at one of Hoka's carbon fiber plated running shoes. It's the Carbon X3. And we're also taking a look at the X2, the previous version, to see what changed. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing as it really helps me make these videos. Here we go. Now the Carbon X3 is Hoka's carbon fiber plated endurance or distance shoe and maybe even like a super shoe kind of because it was like their first carbon fiber plated shoe they came out with. So it kind of gets brought into the super shoe race but doesn't really necessarily belong there because the foam isn't as like bouncy or it's not as light compared to some of those like top tier racing shoes. But it's still a carbon fiber plated running shoe that works really well but it's not quite a daily trainer. So it kind of fits in this weird category where it's not a, like a top tier super shoe and it's not a daily trainer trainer it kind of has this weird limbo status but I think it's a good shoe I really enjoyed running at it and I got a lot to dig into here the shoe did go up in price we went from $180 from the x2 and now $200 with the x3 and even though the price went up the weight did go down about 2% we go from roughly 8.5 ounces in the x2 to 8.3 with the x3 it's not like a necessarily a massively noticeable difference, but it is a slight weight reduction. Even though the midsoles look slightly different, uh, they have the same geometry and stack heights with 32 millimeters in the heel and 27 in the forefoot for the classic Hoka five millimeter drop. However, the X3 did gain a little bit in volume uh, with a little bit of like a larger midsole. Moving on to the upper, it's been completely redesigned. Before we had an engineered mesh, and now we have a one piece knit upper. So it's the tongue, everything is just one piece of a knit material. Now this does keep your foot well contained because it's a non-elastic knit, unlike like the Epic React, which has a little bit stretched to it. This doesn't really have any elastic nature to it at all. It's very comfortable. It's a little bit thicker than the mesh we had last year. And as far as the breathability goes, it's okay. It's not great. Typically with knit shoes, it's a little bit hotter. And I think the material, because it is a little bit thicker, it might be slightly hotter, but it does have a decent ventilation. There is some breathability throughout the entire upper itself which I think kind of sets it apart from other knit uppers which typically don't have that trait so I will say the breathability is okay it's not bad and it's not great it's kind of middle of the road and maybe a slight decrease from last year where you just had that typical engineer mesh the tongue is also, again, part of that one piece knit upper. It's elastic, so you do get a little bit of stretch with it. And my issue with the tongue was typically when I have these one piece knit upper shoes, I end up getting some bunching where, you know, if I want to get a little more of a secure fit, I can have to pull the laces tight and then it bunches the fabric at the top, which is what happened for me here on the X3. Typically, I kind of like the more traditional tongue here where you have a flat, almost kind of like racing tongue, if you will, uh, compared to just a one piece knit upper. Now, it depends if it fits your foot well. I don't think this will be an issue, but for me, I have a slightly more narrow foot, so I had to kind of cinch the laces just a little bit more tightly, uh, which just didn't give me the best lockdown. Again, you do have a little bit more room in the forefoot compared to last year, so it's still a snug shoe. It's just a little bit less snug, uh, especially in the forefoot region compared to the X2. Now, moving to the back of the shoe, and this kind of ties in, pun intended, uh, to the lockdown is the heel area, and you kind of get these two little bubbles of foam or padding at the back of the shoe, and the rest of it is pretty minimal, not much padding whatsoever compared to last year where you kind of have the more traditional elf ear pull tab, plenty of padding in the back of the shoe where they basically stripped that down and gave two little bubbles on both sides to kind of try to lock in your foot. Now for me, the fit was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. Kind of similar to the breathability story, kind of middle of the road. Another great pun. It, it was okay. I had a little bit of heel slip. I didn't love the lockdown just because I couldn't uh, really get a great fit just because it's all one piece and it had some bunching at the top and I had a little bit of heel movement. It wasn't bad, uh, but I did prefer the lockdown and the fit of the X2, which again was a little bit more snug, had the more performance or the more traditional heel counter region with the elf ear pull tab. I do appreciate that the fact that they kept, kept the elf ear pull tab is a really nice touch. It's easy to get your foot in and out of this shoe. It kind of feels like a knit shoe. We can kind of slide it in and out. I, again, the fit was okay, not great. And I think for a shoe at this price point with this you know kind of setup, it's meant to be an endurance shoe or a really fast shoe. I would kind of more prefer a better, or just a little bit more padding and just a more secure fit. Again, I, I don't want to say it's a bad fit where it's like a super sloppy heel fit. It just wasn't as good as the previous version 
in my opinion. Moving on to the midsole, we now get ProFly X, which is a super critical foam. All the companies, all the shoe companies are kind of moving in this direction for some of their shoes. So now Hoka has their ProFly X. Now, super critical foam, different, different kind of manufacturing method compared to like EVA. It's technically has these like injected air bubbles, which kind of create a different structure. But all that boils down to is the midsole is going to be a little bit softer, a little bit lighter, and a little bit more bouncy. Now we do get a more, a larger total volume in the midsole. So on the X2, it was seven. 728 cubic centimeters and now on the x3 it's 736 cubic centimeters so we get a knit upper and a thicker midsole while still going down in weight and i believe most of that weight savings is going to come from the midsole foam again just because the upper and i would assume a knit upper to be heavier than engineered mesh so it's going to be again a lighter even larger midsole which i think is kind of a cool move in the right direction and as far as the geometry the plate and the spring measurement i believe that's all the same so the distance the toes off the ground the distance the heels off the ground is the same uh, for both shoes and the carbon fiber plate sits low in the shoe so it's going to be towards the bottom so you have more foam on top and it's a forked carbon fiber plate so as you get to the toe box it splits into two different sections and it's a very stiff carbon fiber plate you do get a little bit of flex in the forefoot but overall the shoe is incredibly stiff definitely on the more stiff side of things when it comes to carbon fiber plated shoes at least in my experience and you can actually see it if you flip it over with this little cutout you can actually see where the plate is but overall it's a very stiff shoe and the foam itself kind of lends itself to being if you're familiar with the x2 a more firm ride so it's not going to be super bouncy and yes i said it's going to be a little bit softer lighter and bouncier but overall in general compared to most other shoes especially compared to most other super shoes or other carbon fiber plated shoes it's going to be a very firm stable ride and because this is a stiffer more firm shoe you really do notice the meta rocker geometry so it has a really smooth roll to it a really consistent feel and i really personally enjoyed it it was also very versatile it worked really well with the faster tempos because you don't get lost in a softer foam and that plate again is so stiff the energy transfer i thought was excellent and at the slower paces i thought it worked well too it just felt like you're on a nice kind of a stable consistent platform the foam isn't soft so you don't really get lost in the sauce if that makes any sense whatsoever um, but i do want to reiterate it's like a firmer experience especially in the forefoot just because you don't have a whole lot of foam there and there's a carbon fiber plate and you do get it feels like mostly noticeable in the heel section just because if you take a look at it there's just a huge chunk of foam but overall it, it is a lighter softer bouncier than last year but it's going to be on the firmer side of things especially with that carbon fiber plate in the shoe itself i really again kind of enjoyed this ride i'm a 6'7 215 pound runner so i like having kind of a well-built shoe underneath or a nice stable platform and i think this provided an excellent experience especially with how kind of smooth it was with the rocker geometry moving on to the outsole we get the same exact setup pretty much it's that eva or rubberized eva film which is fairly durable especially considering there's no rubber here it's the same kind of setup we see on the mock super Sonic and the Mach 4. I don't know if Hoka will kind of bring this out in um, other shoes, but it seems to work well. Personally, I didn't have any issues while road running. I tried grass a little bit. It's not the best um, for some like wetter surfaces or just other materials, but for road running, concrete, brick, asphalt, whatever it is, I thought it worked well and the durability seemed to be there. So those are all the basic facts about the X3. Let's talk about what I liked and what I didn't like. The first big positive for me was the ride of the midsole. I think the shoe kind of provides a unique experience to the market where it's not like a super mushy, bouncy foam compared to like other super shoes or other plated shoes, but it's really well cushioned. It has about, I'd say maybe 10 to 20%, somewhere in that range, more bounce and cushion compared to the X2 and provides a really smooth, stable, consistent feel that has a very noticeable rocker effect. And I love that sensation that it gave me. It worked really well. It's just like a fun shoe to run in, at least in my experience. And the next big positive for me was the shoe was rather versatile i love kind of taking this shoe at those faster paces and i think that's what this is designed for and it definitely wants to go fast but when i had when i slowed it down it didn't feel out of place and worked rather well now again the foam rather firm not like the cushiest experience but i, I thought it performed well at the slower paces so it kind of rolls you forward and just provides a nice stable platform didn't feel out of place so for being a carbon fiber plated shoe and just kind of the overall uh, setup i thought it performed well no matter what run i basically took it out on. However, the shoe wasn't perfect and there are a couple things to probably keep in mind. The first negative for me is the upper. It was so close to being such an amazing shoe, probably one of my favorites, but I just didn't get the best lockdown with the upper and that probably would have helped me enjoy the shoe even more. Now, I wish it wasn't a one piece knit upper and for some people, I think your foot just might fit this perfectly and then it'll everything will kind of just magically work well. But for me, because I had to tie the laces a little bit tight, I did get some, some scrunching on the tongue because it's all one piece and I didn't get the best lockdown in the ankle and Achilles area very comfortable it worked 
okay, didn't work like amazing, just kind of, it just was okay, if that's kind of the best word. And for a $200 running shoe, I wish I kind of had a more traditional upper or something maybe similar to the X2. I know some people didn't absolutely love it, but I think if it just had a kind of a normal tongue, a little bit more padding, and ankle and Achilles area, I think it would go a long way just to give you that better connection to the shoe itself, which I think helps you enjoy it even more. And the last thing is at $200 with a carbon fiber plate and super critical foam, you kind of have to compare the X3 to some of those other top tier super shoes. And the thing you notice the most is that it doesn't have the latest and bounciest foam, not the most breathable upper, and might not be the lightest shoe. So it's just something to keep in mind. Not to say this is a bad shoe, I really enjoyed it, it worked really well for my running style, but it is important to keep in mind that, you know, if once you're in that top tier price range, carbon fiber plate range, um, or kind of within striking distance, I know it's not as expensive as some of those other super shoes, if you will. I hate to keep on using that word, but it's kind of the, the new term, if you will. Um, it just kind of falls a little bit short. So I think with a couple refinements, maybe a different upper, definitely a different upper, um, and then maybe just a tad bit more bounce out of the midsole, I think this will go a long way. So where does that leave us? Well, I think they made some good improvements compared to the X2, at least regarding to the midsole. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit softer, a little bit bouncier. Now, could they push that even more? I would hope so, and I kind of want to see that in the future, but I think it's a step in the right direction, and I thoroughly enjoyed the ride that the midsole provided. It was a really fun shoe and just worked personally for me in my running style. Now, the upper isn't great and it's not bad. It's just okay, depending on the foot shape you have and how that interacts with the shoe itself. For me, it wasn't the best experience. It wasn't a bad experience, just wasn't ideal. Uh, and it was just like so close to making this like a really almost perfect shoe for me. So overall, I think for this shoe, I think it's a really fun one to run in. If you're a fan of the X2, I think you'll be happy with the X3. And if you fit with this upper and it works well for you, I think this will be almost a home run, especially if you like this kind of basically firmer midsole really stiff carbon fiber plate and aggressive rocker kind of shoe. I think this will be basically a great option. So let me know in the comments what you think of Hoka going from X2 to X3, the new super critical foam, the upper update, what other kind of shoes you want to see from Hoka in this new kind of carbon fiber era. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.